Hey folks, Quill18 here, and do you like games that make you feel dumb? Well, I've got another one here for you, uh, from the masters of people who make games that make you feel dumb, Zachtronic, same people who brought us TIS-100, Infinite Factory, and Space Cam, and Shenzhen IO. This is Opus Magnum. This is a game of alchemy over here. And you can see I haven't progressed very far. This is definitely going to be a let's try. Uh, but I also want to make sure that my video was only covering some of the earliest puzzles so that we wouldn't spoil anything too, too late. So each one of these puzzles, and I mean, <clears throat> there's a first chapter with an instruction you can go through. It teaches you all the basics. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say that like the writing is the universe's most compelling kind of thing, but it gives the proper mood, nice art over here. And yeah, it teaches, teaches you all the mechanics over here. And then you go into your first set of puzzles over here, some of which I have solved. I'm going to work on airship fuel over here, and we're going to talk about how the game mechanics work. And again, you can see there's a bit of a story that is described, and we can propose a solution to the problem. So, the point of Opus Magnum is to build a machine that performs alchemical transmutations for you. It's a semi-programmable, semi-mechanical process to do that. In this example over here, our product that we are trying to accomplish here is airship fuel, which is going to be a bonded molecule with two elemental fire molecules over here, and two, um, I think they're kind of, they're, they're, they're something salt. We can actually click over here for the full transmutation. Yeah, just salt over here. So fire, both all fire, air, water, and earth can be transmuted to salt. And there's a couple other variants over here. And then other elements like lead, for example, can be transmuted upwards all the way to gold. So some of these transformations. And then these things can also be bonded together. So we're looking to create something that looks like this in the end. <clears throat> I haven't actually solved this puzzle yet, but I think we can probably work it out. One of the interesting things is for the puzzle, there's definitely not just one solution to the puzzle. There's, well, probably infinite number of solutions to the puzzle. But at the end, you do actually get scored based on the total cost of your device, as well as how many processing cycles it took to accomplish the, the needed products. Um, usually you have to make more than one, as well as the area, the size of the machine that you have built and it compares it against your steam friends to make you feel extra dumb in the end but it also means there's different goals sometimes you're going to want um <clears throat> a large expensive machine that produces things very fast because you're trying to see how few cycles you can use or sometimes you're going to try to build a tiny very cheap machine that may work a little bit slower let's focus on tiny and cheap for this particular one Let's talk about the examples. So I've got access to up to three of these reagents. Now these will spawn one constantly. This is an unlimited supply of these reagents. Sorry, I was pronouncing it wrong. Um, and you can put it anywhere you want. <clears throat> and then we've got a variety of mechanisms over here. So for example, we have a variety of arms. This is an arm. You can put it anywhere. That'll be the pivot point. You can change its length up to a certain amount. And you can set its initial rotation if you want. So for example, what I can do is let's say I were to swing this guy over here, maybe move him up this way. This machine has its arm over this reagent, and then I can program this machine. This is arm number one, this is row number one over here, and here are all the various commands that I can give it. For example, I can give it the grab instruction. And just by putting it in there, it'll do a grab, and then let's say I tell it to then rotate over to the side. If I were to hit play, we're gonna see that in effect. It's gonna grab, and then it's going to keep rotating here because it keeps trying to replay the grab instruction over and over. And at some point, it loops all the way around and we get a collision, which is a bad state. What I could do <clears throat> is have this arm rotate. Let's say we have it rotate three times and you can use the hotkeys to quickly put it down. And then I'll go ahead and tell it to drop that piece. And then again, rotate three more times. And that'll be the full cycle. It's going to grab over there, drop, rotate, grab. Again, we'll get a collision, but you sort of get a vibe about how this is going. Okay, so how are we gonna create this? Obviously, we do need the elemental fire to be dumped in these two slots, but we also need salt over here. How do we get salt? Well, salt is something that you can create using a glyph. There's a glyph of calcification, which transmutes any of the four cardinal elements, air, fire, water, and earth, into neutral salt. And it does it just when you pass over. If I just take this glyph and say, put it here, or let's put it there for the sake of whatever, and let's say I hit play again, as soon as the fire passes over this, it'll turn to salt and we drop the salt down there. You don't have to drop it on there, just as soon as it passes over. Okay, so we can get salt, we've got fire, that's great. The problem is we can't just dump things as is because these actually have to be merged together. They have to be bonded. Let's take a look at what's involved in doing that. Um, let's get rid of this for a second and let's grab one of the glyphs of bonding. And you can rotate these as well. So let's say I go ahead, oh, you know what, I'll leave it there. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to have this arm drop um, one fire here, which it's already doing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have it reset. I'm going to use it actually an easier way to reset right over here. Reset instruction. If I put that there, it'll automatically perform all the steps. It'll drop whatever it's carrying and then reset itself to its original position. It takes just as long to do it as if you'd manually programmed it in, but you don't have to worry about actually typing in that in. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab another file elemental or element, and then I'm going to rotate leftwards twice and drop it right there. And I'm going to drop it by putting another reset instruction. So if we let this play, it'll drop one here. Then it'll drop one there, and these two are now bound, bonded together, which we can see evidence of that if I were to say, put another arm over here and get it to wait until right this step, we're gonna grab, and then I'll just rotate a couple of steps over and we'll see what'll happen. There we, oh, right, it's gonna, let me rotate the other way so we don't get a collision. <clears throat> we'll see what that looks like. So it grabs, you can see that these are now bunched together. Okay, so now we kind of have all the tools we need to solve this problem. Now, there are many other different mechanisms over here. First of all, there's twin grabbers, hextuple grabbers, and so on. There's also, um, this it here is a piston, which you can actually change length. It's got the same um, length range as one of these fixed arms, but you can actually give it instructions to grow or shrink with a W and S over here. So as it goes, it can grow and shrink. And the final mechanism over here is actually a track, which you can actually draw any kind of path here and you can get things to move one step at a time along this track. So there's actually quite a lot of uh, flexibility in how you do your machines. Still, I think we can do this one fairly small. Um, let's figure this out here. We might even be able to do this with just one arm. We're obviously gonna need a glyph of calcification, and we're gonna need a source, and we're gonna need some sort of bonding. Um, if I go and do this, so the salt's gotta be on the ends. Let's see here. Let's set this as the initial position. Let's get rid of these, and let's clear all these instructions. So let's tell you to grab this and then go two spots clockwise and then reset and then grab again go one spot clockwise which should bond it instantly and then go again what will this do so you drop there boom okay and then it'll keep trying to uh that's interesting hold on that is very interesting as far as I know, there's no way to scrub through the timeline. Although you can step one at a time. So if we do this, and the next piece, as soon as it goes there, that's actually a really good shape. That's the next grab. I think we got to continue with the sequence here. Um, so you're going to reset. You will, again, grab, move one clockwise. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pivot like this, move clockwise again, and then I think reset. And do that, drop there, pivot, and do this. And then what we can do is grab one more over here, place it, oh, I think I, I gotta pivot this a second time. Yes, I do. But then place it here, and then pivot it again, get this one to pass over that symbol, so both ends will be salt, and then we'll put it in somewhere else. Um, so right here, I gotta take this, move it over by one, and put in a second pivot. Let's see here. So you're gonna do that, pivot twice, go there, and then um, after the reset, you're gonna grab one more time, go clockwise, pivot, clockwise, clockwise, that should make the salt and then if you pivot just one more time, or rotate one more time, I think we're okay. Let's take a look. So you go there, you go there, do that, you go there, we pivot, and yes, but before you reset, we've got to pivot um, anti-clockwise twice. Um, so that is the Q over here. Do, do. I think we've got a full segment using only one arm here. 
Now, I don't expect to win any records for the... Boom! And it'll go... With every loop, it'll go faster and faster because we got to get a total of six products. It'll go faster and faster and just power through this. I don't think we're going to win any speed records here, but um, I don't think you can do this with any fewer materials than this. You might be able to rearrange things to use slightly less area, although I'm not entirely convinced about that. Okay, one more product needs to be made. And bam. Woo! All right. So the two other people on my friends list who have completed this puzzle, we've got Ro and Emmerich over here. I definitely have the cheapest solution over here. I think this graph shows you um, the solutions that all players overall have produced. I have the slowest machine out of my two friends over here, however. Not really a surprise. I might actually be able to optimize the cycle um, with this machine just by moving a few things and minimizing some of the swinging, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, and in terms of area, actually, the area is quite big. Now, I don't believe, I don't know for sure, but I don't think these scores are necessarily for exactly the same puzzle. I think I could make this cheap one, get credit for it, then make a whole nother one based around fewer cycles, get credit for that while keeping my old score. I'm not 100% sure though, but I'm quite pleased with this because this is what I was going for. So we can re return to the menu, we get a bit more flavor text about this. Excellent. And then we can do that. Now, if I want to create a new solution, I can. I can just create this, so let's, you know, let's let's name this one to be um, cheap. Boom. And then we're going to do another solution over here. We'll try to see if we can make everything a lot faster. You know, cost be damned. Um, it's a little annoying that we only have the four, or the three, three reagents when we need four drop-offs. Let's see. So if cost be damned, let's assume what we're going to do is something almost like this. Like we'll want to get to a point where we've got one part of the equation there, the other part of the equation here, I think we want it that way. And then what they can do, these two arms can then rotate inwards. So if they, this one rotates clockwise, this one rotates anti-clockwise, they'll merge there. Um, and then we still need to push it in. So actually, let's say number two, because cost be damned, will be a piston one. So that after everything is merged together, this one can just push upwards and put the solution in there. Okay, that's all right. Um... We do still have a slight problem in terms of not enough total reagents. Now, and we do need the regular filamental ones to be in the middle. Hmm. Okay, well, there's a few different ways to do that. I mean... I could have a calcification over here. Maybe the other way around. Um. Oh, you've got the long distance as well already. Let's do this. Calcification over here. Again, this is not going to be particularly cost effective, but let's see if we can minimize the cycles. This is going to be a little bit more. I think we may need to move things about to get this to work the way we want. But let's see this. Let, let's get the, the first concept going. So arm number one, your job is going to be this. First, what you're going to do, actually, you'll start here, which is going to be fine. So you're going to grab, then you're going to rotate counterclockwise uh, three times to land here. Then you'll reset. Then you'll grab again. Then you'll rotate clockwise, which will pass over the glyph of calcification a second time, and then you will reset. So if we run this, excellent. And then after this, uh, you're actually not going to reset right away. Oh, we can save a little motion if we do it the other way around, which we can drag around pretty easily. We're going to get the glyph of calcification down first, 
and then this side, and then, yeah, instead of resetting, what we're going to do is we don't have to let go. I can just swing clockwise and then reset. So you put you there, you do that, and then drop, and that's what we want. And then we'll be keeping going after we break out the middle. Okay, so that's that. Second arm, I think this process is going to be a little too slow. You're, but you're gonna, we're going to try. We're going to start you here. So second arm, you're going to grab. You're going to go clockwise once, which will create the salt. Then you're going to pull in. Then you're going to reset. Then you're going to grab. You're going to pull in again, which will bond everything. And then you're going to rotate counterclockwise and reset. It turns out this is actually slightly faster. Oh, you're actually not going to reset. You're going to then push with a W and then reset. Um... Oh, you're bonding too quick. We actually have to like delay this step by one. Because it was doing a bond here. And then we kind of need to throw in a delay here too on the stretch. Give it a chance to work. There we go. There we go. So I believe this will be considerably faster than our last solution. Obviously a lot more expensive. It's 110 instead of 40. Now there might be a way to optimize the movement. Yeah, so it still gives me credit for the cheap one. It definitely gives me a reduced cycle count, although I'm still not an Emrix solution. I am, um, I'm here right now, which is the peak. This is, and again, I think this is the global score. So I'm where a lot of people have gotten to, but we can definitely shrink this. Now, maybe not with this particular run here. Um, we really need to see if we can shave off an, an, um, an operation or two per cycle. Can we get a little less swinging going on by moving things? Hmm. If you were here, I mean, we still need to calcify you somewhere. Because we could go grab that. So that's one. Two, three, four, five, oh, six because of the, the drop. Seven to grab. Eight, nine, ten. Drop. I guess we don't have to drop it here. We could cycle here. And we still need to end up dropping it. So, no, it's no shorter. It's no shorter. Now, we have the third reagent, and that might be a big part of the trick. Let's say we start a new solution here. What we could do is change how our bonding glyphs work. Um, like this. Because we could assemble here and then use a pusher arm. Because if we're going for pure speed, right? To then grab and just shove it over there. Actually, I suppose you could be here. Same thing. You can grab, move here, which will bond. Oh, no, we have to do as two separate steps. Well, I suppose I could have two arms for it. Um, this one moves this one, this one moves that one, they bond together, and then one of them pushes it into the end. Now, these could also be responsible for getting down, um, they could start, say, on one fire reagent here. One goes, the other one goes, gets them in place. Meanwhile, we just set up something very dirt simple, like this and like this, with a fixed arm to grab there. And another one, um, I just want to make sure they're kind of out of the way, like here, and calcifier, and this, 
like this. So, for example, four is going to be very simple. Grab, um, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, reset. Three is also going to be very simple. It's going to be a grab, um, cl clockwise, clockwise, reset. There you go. We get the salt in the right position. And then one and two, we'll have one go first, which is going to be a grab. And it's got to go counterclockwise three times to end up over there. And it can just sort of hold. You're going to have to go clockwise four times. Oh, do you really have to delay one more time? Well, then tell you what, I'll have you go in the opposite order here. There you go. I'm going to hit there unless three delays. See, I don't like the fact that there's delays. This is probably a positional thing that we could optimize, though. So at this point, which is right here, one and two both have to push, which is the W. Excellent. Um, they push one square, at which point we'll have, um, I don't know, one reset, whereas two pushes forward and then resets. Now, I don't know if that's actually going to be faster. It looks sort of cool, but it's got this delay. Now, I think a lot of the delay can be fixed by swinging things slightly differently. I think we're exactly the same number of cycles. Oops, I didn't want to exit out. Um, so if this swung the other way around... There wouldn't be the same collision problem, right? Well, I guess these still have to wait kind of for each other. Okay, hold on. What if four and two both grab from over here? Because four's got plenty of time. So two starts at grab and starts turning, and then four takes over. Um, I think it's got to be here, because I think here you got a conflict, right? Yeah. So it's got to be here, and then four is like, okay, I'm just going to turn clockwise uh, five times in total. Actually, it might be a little shorter. Oh, no, then there'd be a collision. Never mind. It's got to be this way. And then a C. And then two doesn't have to rotate as much. Just doing a single rotation. Same thing with one. Rotates twice and then shrinks down. Okay, they're pushing too soon. Yeah, now four is slowing things down. Uh, let's have four start first, actually. Of one go right away. And then two. Uh, three's not programmed correctly. It can grab right away. Go left, left, reset. Go away, go away, go away. that in a little bit more. Well, that's a little shorter. We're down to 70 instead of 83. Um, let's rename this one to faster. It's certainly not fastest. I feel like 
the problem that's holding us up right now is the four. So how do we get the four to not take as long to go around and not collide? We've got time with two to like maybe do some extension and retraction. Not sure if that would be a time saver. Um, I feel like it's it's everything to do with the positioning things. The problem is four can't say swing this way and then that way because it'll hit. And I can't put the I can't put the element here. I could put I could use a track. That's something I hadn't considered actually. And that might save a lot of time. So we can get we can get four to move along a track in some way. Let's say we move you here. Is that any better? Nope, not really. I was going to say, you put the gly glyph of calcification here, but it doesn't help. Oh, I'm sure there's a way to make this faster. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to leave that as an exercise to the viewer while I work on this. Um, could be a multi-thing, especially if the like, cost doesn't matter. Because this is the bottleneck. No, not by much. Really, we can only afford to shave one turn off here. Oh, no, that's not true. Because as long as it drops off here. Because if we got the four to reset this much... So limit it to like three rotations. Then we could get everything to slide back a lot more. I don't think a track is the solution. I think it is a positional thing though. Is there somewhere else I could put this piston arm? The four could also have a reach of two. I don't think that'll calcify anything. That's vaguely interesting. One, two, three, four. Would shave one off. It'd be nice to get up to three flips with the four, though. And these guys are getting in each other's way. And too many sort of, like... And this is all of a sudden a lot of rotations in this, too. Oh, there's an obvious solution, and I'm not just... I'm just not seeing it. What if I replace this with another piston arm? I don't want a piston twice. And I think this would actually lead to a collision. Plus, there's no calcifier. And that doesn't reach that. And there's all kinds of collision problems over here. Can I move the one? It's gotta get it's gonna move over this way. Like I like the sliding thing. That's that's kind of a solution. So I have you come here, retract. Okay, so grab, retract, turn, ex Would that be any faster? I'm having a hard time sort of spotting it. Oh, I had an extra one of those. Um, if four did a grab, retract, um, counterclockwise, extend, reset. I believe so. Now two would need an extra rotation right here. 
but then it gets there, and then we can go and take these guys and move them back here. There we go. That's shorter. And there's probably even more room for optimization. 58! Alright, we're still not at Emmerich's level, but we've cut a lot of cycles off here. Oh! I didn't realize we had such a small area. When did we do the small area? This is only... Hold on. This is only 22 area? And this one's 38 area? Oh, <gasps> because of all the swinging! Oh! I could probably shave down the area of this one here. Because I don't care about cycles in this particular one, right? So, when we get to... Right here. We've got to do that one step for the calcification. Actually, I can back up a little bit here. I can go... If I went here and... Did something like this. I mean, it's not going to work right now, but... I don't know. There's probably a way to do it. Um, I'm just going to go and undo here. I think this is my working solution. I mean, I think it'll, it'll save the like last working version. But I didn't realize the area included everything swinging around outside. I'm like, how is this so freaking big? And the nice thing about other solution, there's very... Oh, we don't have it. Um, whatever, it's fine. I assume you're still working here. Watch us have just broken this thing. Show current area. Oh. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. I, I done did break it. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> We're going to leave it there. So we got faster and apparently smaller over here, which is very interesting. Anyway, I think that's quite groovy. Um, and this is only chapter one tile style puzzles. I've seen images of some of the later ones, and they are insanely big. So there you go. If you like puzzle games that make you feel stupid, uh, then, uh, you know, this might be the one for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.